Hello, fuckos, and welcome to this episode 57 of the Chris Hunter Comedy Podcast with me, Chris Hunter. Hello, folks, how are you doing? Are you well? I hope you're well. Have you had a good week? I hope you have. My week has been pretty damn good because, ladies and gentlemen, it is, of course, the week of all the spoilers, but luckily I'm not going to be doing any spoilers this week, so if you're worried about things that you might hear to do with Avengers Endgame or things that might you might hear to do with Game of Thrones, do not worry. This is a place of safe sanctuary. You will not hear any spoilers from me regarding either of those two topics. I will be talking about them, but not in a spoilery kind of way, simply in a happy, passive kind of way. So, with that in mind, let's crack on with the episode. But first of all, I want to thank everybody who has done the very kind deed of going onto iTunes or wherever it is you listen to your podcasts and leaving me a lovely review. I really, truly appreciate it. Because, folks, if you rate and review the podcast, that is how it gets to more people. iTunes are very stingy with their algorithms. They don't like it if people um, don't have ratings on their podcast. So the more you guys rate, the more you tell your friends about it, the further, the wider the breadth this thing can get to and the more people we can speak to around the world and ultimately that's all we want in it folks we want a better communication between people and other people and that is how it works so once again thank you folks i really appreciate it and anybody else who hasn't liked or reviewed yet feel free to do that now i i will i'll wait a sec you done all right let's get back to it so i went to watch a play last week i um i think i told you guys i was going to go watch it the dunham thespians were doing a performance of Jane Austen's Emma and it was brilliant I had a really really good time and I kept getting so sort of lost in the play like you forget that it's an an amateur dramatics production because the quality was fantastic all the set and everything they had really nice lighting they had they had a bloody carriage for god's sake I mean I've never seen a carriage on an amateur stage before (laughs) I don't know how they pulled it all off but they did and it was really bloody good um I'd like to give a more in-depth review of it but I can't because I'm not very good with the words when it comes to theatre talk. But I know what I like. I liked that a lot. Um, and then they're having another performance of something in November. I think it's November. Uh, they don't know what yet, but I know I'm going to that. So, you know, go and see the Dunham Thespians if you folks are near, uh, Dunham Massey. They, they do stuff there. It's really, really good. Really, really good stuff. Um, I feel kind of weird now because I wish I could give like a more of a glowing review, but the words are not coming to me. Everyone was phenomenal. Everybody in the roles, especially Emma, who had to be in every single scene, pretty much. Uh, the girl who played Emma, obviously not Emma herself. That's a fictional character. But the the lady who played Emma was fantastic. Every scene she, she was in, she stole. Um, and there were some other people in it who were just fantastic as well. This is a bland review. I've said fantastic 45 times. You get the idea, folks. I liked it a lot. Go and watch it. Um, speaking of things that I liked, I, of course, went for my burger on Saturday. However, due to gremlins in the kitchen there was no special this week so we thought we'd try and spice things up a little bit except not spice them up because we don't like spicy stuff so instead charlie got the cheeseburger fries which those guys do at a cafe at the end of the universe and oh my god they were friggin delicious cheeseburger fries right it's exactly what it sounds like it is a portion oh my god my phone will not stop buzzing shut up phone it is a portion of uh fries as you may have guessed from the title. Uh, and on top of that was some broken up burger. And on top of that was some oh, delicious burger sauce. And uh, other bits and bobs with it as well. And it was really, really nice. It tasted like uh, just like a handful of Big Mac. It was really good. And so I'm going to get that again in the future, I think. If there's a... Uh, I say get that again. It was Charlie's. That is Nixon. I actually had the halloumi burger, which I forgot what the title is of the burger. It's got a name on the menu, but it was really good. It was halloumi and uh, veggie stuff and whatnot. Super tasty. Super tasty. Now, like I said, no spoilers are going to happen in this podcast. Um, I went to watch Avengers Endgame in 4DX, which is the moving seats with a rah, ooh, and that's a psh, and the splash in the face and the smoke and really, really cool way of watching that kind of film. And I loved every second of it. I was a little bit worried about the fact that it was a three hour film and I have the bladder of an, a child ant. So, you know, I'm sitting there 10 minutes in. I'm like, Oh, Jesus, here we go. Oh, Jesus, I need to wee. That's what happens. But the film was so good that it, it kept, uh, it kept me interested all along, you know, every few, like, every, Every sort of like 10 minute chunk, there was something else for me to think about or something else for me to be distracted by. And so those three hours really flew by to the point where as soon as the film finished, I said to Charlie, 
I want to watch that again. That was bloody phenomenal. Really, really, really enjoyed the film. Um, and it made me want to go back and watch the whole of the MCU again, the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is 22 films, ladies and gentlemen. And I think, I might be wrong here, but I think I've only not seen one of them. Actually, let me check. Let me check here uh, whilst I'm chatting to you guys. MCU list. Let's see. So there's 22, like I said, a uh, list of them. There we are. I have seen Doctor Strange. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've seen Doctor Strange. Um, I know that much. Uh, no, sorry. I've not seen Doctor Strange. Uh, but let's see. Iron Man, yep. Yeah. Incredible Hulk, yeah. Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, Marvel, uh, yeah, the Avengers, okay. And then there's Iron Man 3, Thor, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm not going to read them all. I don't want to bore you guys to absolute death. But let me just see. Yep, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Seeing that, seeing that. So yeah, I was right. The only one I've not seen is Doctor Strange, which is stupid. I should have watched it. I missed it. I can't remember why I missed it now, but I know I missed it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go back and watch them all. I want to pick an order because there's a few different lists knocking about in the order of which you should watch them. Uh, I'm thinking actual chronological order, but the problem is different things happen in the films in different times, you know? So sometimes there's flashbacks, sometimes there's you know, events over a few years or whatever. So I don't know. I might just pick a list and say, you know what? That sounds good. Let's go for that one. Um, but yeah, it was, it was sad to see the end of a franchise, you know, the, the Marvel cinematic universe. I know they've got a few more films coming out, but they're all prequels, you know what I mean? But this, this main, this main hero batch that we've had over the past, what, since 2008. So over the past 11 years, we've had this main hero batch. Um, and yeah, it was, it was hard to see it end you know uh but at the same time i'm curious to see what they do next i'm looking forward to what the future has to hold because if they can do anything remotely on par to what that was then holy shit there's a future in cinema you know what i mean it looked ridiculous um speaking of things looking ridiculous like i said again there will be zero spoilers here i've i watched game of thrones last night um for those of you for time context to know when this was uh this with the episode, it's episode three, season eight. I think it's called The Long Night or something like that. Um, it was an absolutely stunning episode. I think it was expertly paced. It was done in three clear acts, which is really nice. Uh, nothing being spoiled here, nothing getting given away. A lot of it was dark, which a lot of people are complaining about online. And I just, I'm not understanding. Not only they're complaining about it, but they're also bitching about the cinematography department, which it's not their job. The lighting is not their job. Cinematography is composition and all that jazz. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the whole, the thing, it's, it's all set at night. You know what I mean? It's, it's set at night and it's in the dark. What do you want them to do? Do you want them to give fake lights so that you can see things a bit clearer? I mean, it, I didn't find it too bad. Granted, I was watching it on a projector, but you know, that doesn't really make a difference. The projector, if anything, should be weaker than the TV when it comes to light, lightening dark stuff, you know, but I found it really, really, a pleasurable episode um and i enjoyed every second of it like again that was the same thing uh like avengers the day before you know it didn't feel long at all but it was like i think 86 minutes or something stupid like that it was a really long episode it was a film there's no two ways about it it was a bloody film um but yeah it was so well made so well done and uh like just everybody who take who took part in it it's just ridiculous i mean i watched the making of thing afterwards which was on youtube because hbo put up a making of after each episode which is really really cool um because i love behind the scenes shit like that and they were talking about the fact again no spoilers don't worry folks you don't need to turn it off um they were talking about the fact that they they worked 55 straight nights to get these shots done for this episode 55 night shoots between i think it was like 6 p.m and 5 a.m and at times it was minus 14 it's like, what the fuck? That is passion. That is absolutely fighting through passion. Now, please note, there is a difference between that kind of shoot and crunch. When you hear about things in crunch for game developers like myself, um, that is a different kind of thing. Luckily, I'm not, I don't ever really have to take part in the crunch culture anymore. It's not really a thing that our company does, but some companies sadly still do it and it's really bad. There was, there was an article, uh, there's a story, and I'm, I'm on a tangent here, but whatever. There's, um, well, Game of Thrones loved it. There you go. Yeah, there was an, an article the other day about the the uh, developers behind Mortal Kombat 11. I forget which developer it is now, but they apparently have been absolute hell to work for for the past few titles, and I didn't even know about this. But yeah, they had people just oh, fuck, in really, really bad ways. 
Um, working insane hours. I'm talking, some people were doing 80 to 100 hours. Uh, one guy, he was saying about, he, he managed to get an evening off from 8 p.m. onwards to go to his sister's wedding or something like that. It's like, are you shitting me? He had to work, obviously worked his birthday and all that stuff, but it's like the crunch culture, right? Crunch doesn't help. For those of you who don't know what crunch is, I just realized I've not clarified this at all. Crunch is when you have a deadline coming, shit ain't ready, you have to work to get it done. The deadline cannot be moved. Uh, you are there. You're going to get it done. Get it done. It's going to happen. Um, but the problem is, that should never be in that situation. That crunch should never, ever come to light because production and management and all that stuff, all the people higher up should be able to organize what they're doing and what you're supposed to do in the right time and so that you're not running over, you know? Um, so it's, it's, to be fair, it's really, really, really hard to plan that kind of stuff, but that's exactly why you hire experts. That's exactly why you hire really good producers, <clears throat> really good directors all them kind of people to help with the situation uh, because it's not fair to the staff you know when shit trickles down and then the staff are getting sick or dying some people you know get really really ill from overworking there's a there's a word in in Japanese for death by overwork I forget what it is but it's a, it, it exists which means it's a problem um, but yeah there's also something I saw about was it Riot I don't want to name names if it wasn't Riot but I think it was basically they're, they're trying to um, they're trying to get sexual assault cases pushed out of court because apparently the staff at some point signed a waiver saying that they couldn't sue him for stuff. It's like, are you shitting me? That's insane. Uh, anyway, well, how did we get into this weird, dark, subjective, fucked up game devs? Anywho, I saw a trailer the other day before, um, I don't know what film it was. It wasn't Avengers, but it was a different film. But anyway, the trailer for Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and it looked fucking amazing. Like, uh, the last Godzilla film, I absolutely loved it, with the one with Brian Cranston in it. Uh, this one's got uh, Eleven in it from Stranger Things. What's the name? Uh, Bonnie? No, I can't remember her name. But anyway, she's in it uh, as the lead by the looks of it. And the film looks fucking brilliant. They've got a bunch of different uh, different kaiju you know, monsters in it, including the almighty Mothra, which sounds really geeky and nerdy, but when you see it, you would not want to fuck with Mothra. You'd need some big ass mothball to kill that bitch. Because that's just how it is with Mothra, you know? Um, but yeah, it looks, it looks ridiculously stunning. And I can't wait to watch it. Um, right. We'll be back in a sec, folks, after a short word from our sponsors. Are you tired of keeping your pledge to the watch? Would you rather do anything than have to face the White Walkers? Then you should join Walk Your Way. Walk Your Way is a union set up by Sam Tarly, who was sick of being scared of his inevitable death and would much rather walk away. Don't let your watch end tonight, because winter's coming. And we're back. Um, I'm quite proud of myself recently. I've been doing well with sticking with my Japanese learning. Uh, I'm taking it super seriously. I've been doing at least an hour every night for the past four nights and you know what it's starting to get there um excuse me i um i'm up to where i was last time i think uh so now it's just all progression from here and i had a bit of a scary realization before that i need to know so much japanese in such a short amount of time but i can do it i know i can do it although i would appreciate any support you guys might have when it comes to advice or anything like that with big challenges big scary challenges how do you overcome them what do you do to get yourself focused to give yourself some drive to keep motivated and carry on with it let me know uh send me a message on social media and i will gladly read out your advice on the next podcast uh, but yeah so i'm quite happy with it so far I'm, i feel like i've got a, an actual game plan as well i'm going to do the Heisig, remember the kanji method, which is like, you learn the little symbols, you know, the, like the Chinese characters that the Japanese use. They have like little stories attached to them and that helps you remember them. And then after that, I'm going to learn all grammar and shit like that. And then you don't need to know the details, blah, de, blah, de, blah. But either way, I'm a no Japanese in about a year. So that's going to be good. I can't wait for that shit. It's going to be beautiful. And also we've been trying to get a bit healthier, as you know, as I said last week, as I keep getting asked about in work by Andre. Um, you, I, I've been doing, well, we're trying to go back to something we did years ago, which worked well for us, called the 5-2 method. 
uh, what you do, and don't worry, it's not like a fad diet. It's just something to kind of help the metabolism start up properly. You, um, for five days of the week, you eat normally. You don't eat crazy. You just eat normally. Uh, but for two days of the week, you eat very little. It's like 600 calories for those two days, 600 each, obviously. Um, and it's, it's a little tough, but honestly, we had our first day yesterday starting this method again. Uh, cause I remember last time we did it, we did lose, uh, weight and we felt better. Uh, this time we did it once yesterday so far. I was pretty much fine with it. Um, it was great. We made, I made really nice sandwiches for lunch. We had those, uh, what are they called? Warburton's flats, I think, something like that. They were nice. That's, that's only 100 calories and some lettuce and a bit of chicken. A little bit of light mayo. That was 200 calories. And for tea, we had a big bowl of vegetables, which was freaking delicious. I love vegetables. So I, we used the, I, I used the steamer for the first time. Um, well, it's, it's a steam function. You know, it's one of those eight in one fancy devices. I use it for rice cooking, but I used it for steam yesterday and I feel healthier because steamy veg keeps me slim. Uh, yes, yeah, so that was really, really tasty, but. It got to a bit later in the night and I was getting a bit hungry. Charlie went to bed because she was like, look, if I go to sleep now, I can eat in two minutes because it'll be breakfast time. And you know, I can't really fault that logic. I had the same kind of logic with Santa when I was younger. If I go to sleep now, it'll be Christmas. You know, it's that kind of logic. And it completely makes, it completely makes sense to me. Uh, so yeah, tomorrow's going to be our next, uh, locale day. Let's see how it goes. I think it's going to go fine. Um, it's something we'll just get used to and gradually get better at, I think. And then when we're at a state where we've lost enough weight to be able to morph the, uh, the old tissues around into something muscular. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the plan is, but you know what? We'll lose some weight doing this and that's what matters. Uh, but, but, but what else was I going to talk about? Oh yeah. This year, as you guys know, I'm saving up, trying to save some money, trying to be good with my penis. Uh, but unfortunately there's a shit ton of acts coming over. Um, to do gigs and shows and stuff. And I can't go to almost any of them. Granted, we've been lucky enough to go to some shows this year because we already had tickets booked last year, uh, before we started to put dates on events and stuff. Uh, but yeah, like baby metal are coming back over to London, which I love baby metal. They're brilliant. One OK Rock are fantastic. And they're coming to Manchester. It's not even a far gig. And Hollywood Babylon, the Kevin Smith, um, podcast with Ralph Garman is coming over to Manchester. And, oh, God, I'd love to watch that, but we can't, and that's fine. You know, sometimes you have to make little sacrifices in life to achieve your overall goals, and that's what this is. This is a small sacrifice to achieve the goal of living in Japan next year. Um, I'm not allowing myself the option of that not happening, by the way, next year. I'm, I, I had some realizations before that it was kind of scary, but at the same time, it's always going to be scary. When would it not be scary? If it's not scary, it's not a challenge. And if it's not a challenge, then why are you doing it? You know, that's a good way of looking at stuff. Well done me. Pat, pat, pat. Uh, anywho, I have a question this week, folks. Somebody actually asked me a question. How nice is that? Because I always ask for questions and no bugger ever asks them. But this week they have. Somebody has asked me, what is your favourite musical film? Now, this one is quite easy to answer because I am obsessed with the movie Sweeney Todd. Uh, when I worked at the cinema in Odeon... Uh, Sweeney Todd was coming out, uh, and they, they used to play trailers in the foyer all the time. And every time they play the Sweeney Todd trailer, all the staff would just stop and sing the little bit of epiphany that played in the trailer. <laughs> and it was brilliant. Um, and it was so good. The film was so good that I actually, like in Odeon, on your, on your name badge, you have your name and then your favorite film underneath it. And that film was so good that I got mine changed from Ghost in the Shell to Sweeney Todd. And I, Fucking love it. It is, it's creepy. Me and Charlie know every word to every song. And we used to sing along to the soundtrack in the car all the time. Excuse me. Uh, we were those weirdos that do that kind of stuff. And you know what? I love it. I wouldn't want it any other way. If you have a weirdo in your life, bloody keep him. Cling on to him. Don't let him go nowhere. Because you need to keep the weirdos in your life. If they're good weirdos. If they're bad weirdos, then get rid. You know, you don't need them. You don't need that shit in your life. Um, Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything for me, folks. Remember, I really appreciate the, uh, the ratings and the, uh, the, uh, reviews that you folks have been leaving 
on the podcast and the shares that you've been doing, showing your friends, telling people about it. Truly, truly appreciate it. So thanks again for that, folks. Uh, please keep on doing it if you've not done it yet. I would deeply appreciate it. And if you've got any questions for me or any recommendations or you just want to hurl abuse at me, you can find me on social media. Uh, I'm I'm Chris Hunter Comedy on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, and on Twitter, I'm at Chris Hunter Com, which is short for comedy. So thanks a lot for listening, folks, and I will see all you beautiful barstools next week. Bye bye now. <laughs> <laughs>